<laughs> so that music it's stuck in my head hello everyone it's um it's me it's been a minute since i've done something like this uh by myself i think the last time i uh i came live um by myself i was on here for uh for a while for a long 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 time um so yeah, I think this this one will be uh, a little bit shorter than the the last one that I was uh, live by myself, probably by about twenty three hours and thirty minutes, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, you're not going to be seeing twenty four hours of me, fortunately for you. So this evening, this very hot, humid, sticky evening, I am going to be giving my first impressions on some fragrances some new fragrances, should I say, from the, uh, from Matt, from, from Pocket Sense. So, um, there are seven new fragrances that have, uh, 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 uh something just happened to, uh, 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 uh. Tony's just noted a comment. He can't stay. He's away for the night and Bex has just gone to the toilet. Oh, well, I appreciate you dropping in, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, where was it? Yes. Yeah, so there's seven new fragrances in the line. Um, and, um, I've got five here today that I'm going to be doing my first impressions of the other two, uh, Nick is going to do a uh, full reviews on. So I don't know whether they're going to be two separate reviews or two reviews just in general. Shh, I will be quiet. Do you want me to, do you want me to whisper? Do you want me to whisper? Do you want it to be like an ASMR, an ASMR review? No. Says it's going to be a dirty, dirty weekend for, dirty weekend for 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 T Dog. Oh, it's going to be hot in there. Oh, jeez. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so the fragrances that we've got today, I've got a little bag of everything. Um, let's have a, a quick look. I should have probably come prepared. I have got some strips ready, but uh, so the fragrances that we're going to be doing a first impressions of today um are as follows the first one is a fragrance called equinox i've got a sample here this if i'm not mistaken is a interpretation of a fragrance called le frenchy i think that's how you say it le frenchy by guerlain never heard of it never smelt it no idea what to expect. The next one is Arcasanti. I think that's how you say it. Arcasanti. Arcasanti. Um, and that is a fragrance. Uh, that sorry, that is inspired by Elysium by Roja. So I'm expecting big things from from that one because if I've never smelled Elysium myself, but it is a lot of people's one of a lot of people's favorites so we shall see on that one there is one here called sibilance oud saffron and patchouli and this is a uh, interpretation of a fragrance with the strangest name it is voice of the snake by Gucci. Now I've never ever heard of that, and I think it's it's either an ingenious name because you're never going to forget it, or it's the silliest name you've ever heard of. I mean, Voice of the Snake. Um, but anyway, I digress. And then we've got one called Raspberry Oud and Incense, and this is an interpretation of Ombre Nomad, and I believe that's Louis Vuitton. And then the last one is Murtonka and Vanilla, which is a interpretation of Joe Malone, I believe, of the same name. So, I'm not too sure which ones to go with first or what I'm liking the sound of first. I think I'm going to go with sibilance first because I get the feeling this may be, based upon the notes and it's probably my least favourite. I mean, we'll see. I, I don't know. Um, based upon the notes, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look. We'll, we'll have a little gander. So let's. Uh, I've got a fan on here, so if there's a loud noise or anything, if there's a whirring sound, it's because the fan's on because it's like an oven in here. So 
Let's give this a little spray and we'll see what it smells like. It's on my finger already. Hang on. Hang on. Right. Sibilance. So again, this is inspired by a fragrance called Voice of the Snake by Gucci. And the fact that it's oud, saffron, patchouli, I'm expecting some kind of really quite heavy, heavy kind of spice uh, to this one with a bit of backbone. It's probably from, from oud, saffron, and patchouli, probably sounds like something that's going to stick to you for a while, but let's get me schnoz on it and have a look. So that's actually really quite nice. I wasn't expecting... I was expecting something to be quite harsh, but the oud in it. Javier, thank you very much for uh, for joining us, mate. Appreciate it. The oud in it's really quite pleasant. I was expecting, I don't know why I was expecting it to be um, harsher, maybe because it's got, you know, twinned with saffron and uh, patchouli. I mean, I don't know the breakdown of all the notes in it. And like I said, I've not... I've not tried the original that it's that it's uh, interpret the, that it's kind of based on, um, but that's really really quite nice. There's a the oud is probably the most prominent one in there, and there is a a a, a backbone to it of a of a bit spicy. I mean, I'm not really getting any patchouli right now. It's really quite fragrant. It's um. The the oud in it, it's um it's it's got a nice kind of woody woody nature to it, but it, it feels almost a little bit fragrant, and I'm thinking that might be the saffron that's attached to it. It almost feels a little bit tangy, almost like it's not like a, a skanky or a barnyard oudy or anything like that. It's really quite nice, actually. In this kind of heat. Maybe it's maybe too much for this kind of heat. I mean, especially I mean, it's like 30 degrees here today. Um, so maybe not 30 degree weather. But this is really quite nice. I would say maybe kind of like autumn, winter, because it does feel quite heavy. That's really, really nice. I'm quite, I'm quite surprised by that, actually. I don't know why I had reservations about that one, but I'm, I'm really enjoying that. I'll go back to that after I've, um, after I've sprayed the rest of it, and uh, we'll see what's what. So I'll go with the raspberry, oud, and incense. Again, probably because I'm kind of a little bit scared of oud. So I'm, um, I, like the barnyard or skanky oud or anything like that, it kind of... Um, it it does it doesn't sit well with me, so I'm going to get these out of the way now, just in case any of them are a little bit skankier, um, so I can get them out of the way. But this is inspired by Ombre Nomad, which I believe people rave about. So we'll see. Let's have a go. Let's have a go. I do really quite like raspberry in a fragrance as well. It's quite a nice. No, if done well. Rich Mitch, how's it going, dude? So this is a lot. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the raspberry... That's that's quite interesting, actually. Again, not, not, uh, not skanky. Not skanky at all. That's a little bit delicious. That's a little bit delicious. I won't lie. Not too bad, mate. I'm um, I'm sweating my sack off in this room, but um, I'm not too I'm not too bad. The raspberries really, really coming through for me on this one. And there is there is that kind of spicy undertone in the background, which is is complementing it quite nice. It's It's quite strange. I don't, it doesn't smell kind of oody. It just smells really nice and woody. Mixed with the berry, some spice. That's really quite nice. It's, it, that, that strikes me as very unisex, this does. 
because there's a because there's a it's not a it's not floral but there's a florally nature to it you know what that's really quite nice the two that I was kind of like worried about the most are absolutely lovely. Again, not this kind of heat, not this kind of weather at all. Um, yeah, I think that if you put this in any kind of like high temperature, high climate, it's going to be cloying as hell. But that raspberry is really quite nice. It's really quite refreshing. It's almost got a bit of a powdery nature to it as well. Which is nice, not like a talc, not like a talky or anything like that. But it just feels a little, a little powdery, a little. I don't know if effervescent is the word. That's really nice. Yeah, no, I'm getting on with that really quite well. That's another winner, another hit, another winner. Let's put that down here. Let's not lose track of these. Make sure I know which one's which. Yeah, it's um for those of you that aren't that are tuning in that are not in in England or Britain or anything. It's it's like hotter than hell in in Britain today. It's been so so hot, and it's nice when the sun's out. Don't get me wrong. It's nice when the sun's out, but this time of night, once the sun's gone down and there's no air, there's no breeze, it's just dank and sticky, and it's just, it's just, it feels like you're in the middle of a, like a marsh or a bog, it's horrible. Oh. So yeah, fans galore, but at the meantime, at the, at the minute, it's just kind of like blowing hot air at my legs, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what it's doing, but I don't know. So the next one uh, we'll go with is uh, Myrrh, Tonka and Vanilla. Now, given the fact that it's Tonka and Vanilla, again, I've not smoked the original to this, but Tonka and Vanilla, two two fragrance notes that I love tremendously. So I'm expecting this one to be really, really quite sweet, which I'm down for because I do love my sweet fragrances. So hoping that the Myrrh isn't too overpowering that you can't really get the sweetness but at the same time i'm kind of thinking without spraying it that the myrrh is probably going to be the first thing and then the tonka and vanilla are probably going to come in a little bit later on maybe potentially in the dry down but we'll spray it and find out let's go oh gosh let's put this down here Oh, in the air, because yeah, I've got this fan that's actually quite nice. In the air, that is super sweet. That is super sweet in the air. It's very, very different up close, though. Hmm. Okay, so that's... So the, the, the sweetness that's coming from this one, so it is sweet. You definitely can get the vanilla. Maybe not so much Tonka, but you can you can definitely pick up the vanilla. But it smells like a vanilla that is in, you know, if you have like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, shower gels or shower or, or lather, you know, like imperial leather kind of product, like bath products and stuff like that. If you get one that is a sweeter one with a vanilla, that's the kind of vanilla that you get from it. So it feels very soapy, very clean, because that's the, the kind of thing that I associate from it. Doesn't detract away from how sweet it is because it's definitely very sweet. But it's kind of got a, like a perfumed sweetness to it. And that's probably the myrrh that's, that's making that change from just being uber, uber sweet. That I get the feeling that this is going to be, this is going to stick to you like crazy. Is it a, it's an eau de parfum. I get the feeling that this is going to be like an all dayer that I can't see this kind of like being gone within a couple of hours. 
It's just got a thickness to it. This the sweetness is just getting more as as I'm as I'm smelling it and as I'm talking, the sweetness is just growing and growing. This this is this is perfect perfect winter fragrance for me. Perfect for winter, deep, rich, sweet, a little fragrant, a li a li a little bit clean, a little bit soapy and bubbly, but. It's starting the vanilla. Maybe the tonk is coming through as well, but the vanilla is starting to smell more and more like an edible vanilla now. Like it's just starting to smell like something that you want to eat. I'll tell you what, it's three out of three bangers so far. Three out of three bangers, and they were the ones that I was thinking mm, maybe, maybe, maybe not, Matt. That's off, mate. That's off to you. Because they are uh, fucking delicious. That's good. That's good. Right. Let's. Um, so I get the feeling that these are now kind of a little bit lighter. So the two that I've got left. So we've got Arcosanti. Arcosanti. Yeah, Arcosanti and Equinox. So from reviews that I've seen and um, write-ups that I've seen of it, Equinox um, gets a little comparison to Green Irish Tweed. It's got that bit of a greenness to it. Um, like I said, this is um, inspired by Le French, <clears throat> sorry, Le Frenchy by Golan, um, which is something that I've not tried. Um, so let's see. But this has got, oh, it's got the notes on. It's got lemon, lemon verbena, Pettigrain, neroli, lavender, tonka, and vetiver. So very green. Very, very green. I'm expecting this one. Um, so let's see. I'm not a huge, the biggest fan of like green fragrances. Like I'm not a massive fan of green Irish tweed. Um, and I feel like and like that's kind of like your that's what you associate with a green fragrance almost. It's just like grass. But we'll see. Let's get this sprayed. Pop you over here. Whoa, very green. Very green indeed. Everyone having a nice weekend? Has everyone been out in the sun today? Wow, yeah, okay. I can definitely I can definitely see the comparisons to Green Irish Tweed on this one. The lemon, the lemon, that's quite interesting, actually. The lemon start, the, the lemon's really quite prominent. It feels like a, a really, like, tart lemon. And the vetiver's really quite strong in this one as well. The vetiver's really, really quite strong in this one. Steven. Yeah, the vetiver's really, really prominent in this one. And I can see that's why people might kind of associate it with that green Irish tree because it's got very much of a, a a green, airy, kind of grassy feel to it. What else did it say? I don't know. Lavender. I'm not getting too much lavender. I'm not a massive fan of Neroli. Um, I, I find it a little too offensive, if overpowering. But you can tell that this has kind of got those kind of like lemony and neroli kind of notes because to me sometimes neroli can come off kind of kind of quite um, lemon pledgy, um, and there is a there is a kind of kind of lemony tinge to this one. Um, I keep on putting my nose on the strips. Sorry, I'm not I've not got a runny nose or anything. But I'm putting my nose on the strips, and now I've got kind of like a yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so this is very, very, th this is warm weather fragrance. This very much is warm weather fragrance. I, almost kind of weather like today, to be fair, when it's really sticky, really hot, really humid in the air. This is super fresh, super clean, super green. There is, and it's probably the Neroli in it, but there is a little chemically feeling about it. I won't lie. 
there's no point in lying about it if I'm being honest. But there is a, and it's like I said, it's probably just me because I'm not a massive fan of Neroli, but there is like a, a lemon chemicalness to it that puts me off slightly. The vetiver is really strong in it. I can appreciate this kind of fragrance, but it's never something that I would reach for. It's never something that um, it, it doesn't really appeal to my taste and I would never reach for it. I would never buy a fragrance like this. Um, and I personally would never wear a fragrance like this, but you can, you can see why people would like it because of the different facets to this fragrance and fragrances of this nature, like vetiver fragrances, in general, and green fragrances, I'm not a huge fan of either. But that's not to say that it's not likable. It is. It's just not to my taste, if I'm being honest. But it's not... Because one of the first things that I found, and I keep on going back to the Green Irish Tree, and it's only because... I can't compare it to it's a, to what it's based upon because I've never smelt it. But if I'm comparing it to Green Irish Tweed, when I first smelt Green Irish Tweed, I just didn't like it. It was a case of I smelt it and I was like, "What? Why do people rave about this? Because it's just it just smells like the ground. You know what I mean? It, it just smells like grass, and I can't I couldn't understand why anyone would want to smell like it. Um, but that was very very early on um, me getting into fragrances. I thought I kind of smell what. I believed at the time is the kind of like, like Creed is, you know, I, at the time it was like, Oh, that's the pinnacle. So I'll, I'll give those a smell, see what they're like. And I never really kind of understood why anyone would like that. Obviously as time went on and his man nose developed to do certain different fragrance, fragrance notes and things like that. You can appreciate things a lot more and you can appreciate why someone might wear this type of fragrance in a certain kind of setting. Um, so I can totally appreciate it. But I wouldn't wear it. The bottom line is I wouldn't. I would never wear a fragrance of this nature. But there absolutely is a market for 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 a fragrance of this nature because green Irish tree, t green Irish tweed, and the likes are very very popular amongst a lot of people. Um, just not me, I'm afraid. Just not me. But there you go. You win some, you lose some. Right, and then the last one, I told you it's not going to be long, it's only going to be about half hour and 25 minutes in, and the last one is Arcasanti. I hope I'm saying that right. If someone, um, if I'm saying it wrong, please someone correct me. Um, but And this is inspired by Elysium, by Rojar. So I'm expect, like I said, I'm expecting quite big things from this because a lot of people absolutely adore Elysium. I hear it gets compared to Aventus quite a bit, or it has that kind of nature. Maybe not a clone of or anything like that, but it has an Aventusy vibe to it. I'm hoping that when I spray it, I don't just smell pineapple because I've smelled that many Aventus clones over the last year too that you kind of get kind of like a little bit. Uh, sick of that kind of opening but let's um let's see let's see what we got got a couple of sprays on that i will say as well matt sent us some decent sample sizes as well so thanks very much for that so steve says nothing like aventus okay well let's um let's see Okay, I can see the comparison. I would never say that it, without without someone pointing it out to me, I would never say that smells like Aventus because it doesn't. But I can see maybe where the comparisons are made once you've made that connection between the two because it's got a very bright, fruity opening. I'm not too sure what the notes are in this one, but very fruity, very citrusy in the opening. I don't know about this, if I'm being honest. It's got a bit of a... There's a bit of a tinge to it. 
Yeah, maybe Vetiver. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. There's a bit of a there's a bit of a difference to to this, and I you know there there may be. I've never smelt the original, so I can't I can't make comparisons in that in that respect. But what I can do is just tell you what I can smell right now. But they're very much open and fruity, citrusy. It's kind of got that that feel to it that. I try and steer away from saying blue because it's not, it doesn't smell like an average blue fragrance. But when you think of things, when you think of things like, and this is probably really kind of insulting to, to the Elysium in itself. But when you think of things like Sauvage, when you think of things like Bleu de Chanel, um, Aventus to a degree, that huge mass appeal quality, it's there and it almost feels I don't know if if there is like an ambroxan thing into the in this or an ambergris feel into it, but it's kind of got that vibe about it that feels just very mass appealing. The fruits and everything seem to have kind of like mellowed out a little bit more now. This this to me this smells very very nice and i'm i feel like i'm understating how like my my how, how much i like this i do really quite like this but i don't feel like this in its scent profile stands out from the crowd and don't get me wrong I'm spraying this on card, so it's going to be very, very, very different to that to when it's sprayed on skin. Um, I, I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to be giving this a wear on skin. Um, tomorrow's going to be another really, really hot day, and this because it's got that blue, fresh quality to it, feels like it's probably a perfect time to wear it on uh, on skin. So I'm going to be wearing this tomorrow just to kind of see if it develops any differently on my skin or it starts off any differently. But it is nice. It's it is nice. I'm not I think what I'm the way I'm saying it and what I'm saying maybe feels like I'm detracting away from from it actually being a really nice fragrance, but my reservation is that I don't feel like it smells too dissimilar to that, to something that has been done for a while. And that's not that's not to say that this fragrance itself that Matt has created is a bad one. It's to say that the thing that it's taking interpretation from, that it's, that it's basing itself around, is probably the way that that is. So it's going to the thing about this one it's a compliment getter this this scent profile this scent dna is a compliment getter it's going to grab you compliments because it's got that nature to it Baza, how's it going it's got that nature to it it's got that mass appealing quality to it and i would i would struggle to find anyone that smelled this and said that they didn't like it just because it's got that kind of um vibe to it um, Basta, this is our Cassanti, so the, the Elysium um, interpretation. So, yeah, I, I like it. I like it. But at the same time, I don't feel like the scent profile or the scent DNA is groundbreaking. But if it's compliments you're after and it's what you need, you know, you want to smell modern and nice, then yeah this is this is perfect because you know this is going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than a roger path than a roger um fragrance and if this is on the money for what elysium is then yeah i mean i find I, I, why would you spend a hundred odd something pound on it when you've when you've got this it's definitely something that me uh, that it's it's a scent DNA that uh, a scent profile that appeals to me. It's just that um, I've got quite a lot of them because that's a, a lot of people do this kind of scent profile, this scent DNA. Would I wear it? Absolutely. Am I going to wear it? Absolutely. In fact, I'm, I'm I am going to wear that tomorrow just to see what the changes from card to skin because from Steve, from the, from the, the chat, Steven says it takes a couple of wears. He thinks it's, it's fantastic. Barry's saying there's some bangers. Yeah. I, 
Baz, I, this is the last one that I'm doing, Baz, but I'm going to give a quick rundown of what I thought of them because I've still got them on the strips. But um, some of the heavier ones that I thought were going to be maybe a bit challenging based upon what, they're, what they are, I was really quite surprised with. Um, so let's go back to my first one, which was Sibilance. So again, this is from uh, an interpretation of Voice of the Snake um, by Gucci, which is just the strangest name for a fragrance. Let's see if it's changed anything. No, that's just, that's the same. That's And it's lovely. It's really, it's really rich in its woodiness. The saffron, it's got a nice kind of spice to it. It's not something, again, uh, I'll be yeah, cemented in that. It's definitely not something you're going to be wearing in the high heat. It's too much for high heat for me. This is definitely going to be winter, autumn, winter in your cooler weather. I don't even think you'd get away with this on a on a summer's evening or anything like that. Not in not in not in Britain anyway, just because it's too sticky. It's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. So the next one was Raspberry Oud and Incense. Let's see if this has changed because this was very oh I can't pick up the there we go. This was very the, the raspberry was coming through quite strong in the opening, so I wonder if that's died down now. It has, you know. That's interesting. So let's just say on it. So it says, Oud, incense, raspberry, rose, and birch. That's the floral, that's the floral nature to it. It's the rose. That's 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 dried down to even better than the opening. That's bloody lovely. The the raspberry twinned with the obviously the rose, and and as everyone knows, if you've if you've seen some videos of mine before, I'm not a massive fan of rose. In fact, I'm not a fan of rose at all, really. This raspberry note is is really really nice. You know, it's really nice. It's not tart, and the oud is not strong either. Yeah. As I can see that it turns into a, a rose oud. This this oud isn't strong. It's just really quite. It's just quite nice and woody. It's not medicinal. It's not skanky. It's just really quite a, a mellow, soft oud, which I I, I prefer. Of I mean I I know some people are oud connoisseurs and they can they can appreciate like one of those you know like really barnyard oud. Uh, barnyard oud fragrances but i've smelled maybe one or two fragrances that i would consider barnyard oud and i immediately had to just get it out of out of my vicinity just because i can't it, it's too much it's far too much these are really smooth these are really smooth it is when i'm smelling it though it, it's giving me an image of of nighttime though this is this feels quite i i can't imagine this is a projector i don't um, i can't really see this projecting that much if i'm being honest this feels like it sits quite close to the skin it feels quite intimate so maybe i i i, I don't want to say that i feel like it's a date night scent because i don't feel like everyone I don't feel like everyone can appreciate an oud or a woody fragrance, but this, if it's if it if it dries down even more to what it's smelling like now, it feels like it's going to become a little bit more floral, which is a lot more appealing than just kind of like a, a woody oudy kind of smell. It's nice, such a tickly nose. <laughs> right, yeah, that's that's really really nice. Now. One that was getting sweeter and sweeter by the second. Myrrh, Tonka and Vanilla. It projects well, Baz. See, from, I mean, this is, again, this, I'm only doing it based upon these, um, these blotters here. But to me, that felt quite close. But if it projects as well, well, oh, the barber noticed it. Yeah, nice, nice. Especially if it's coming through a, 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 a cover as well. So Myrrh, Tonka and Vanilla. I really like this opening. Really, really liked it. It started to get sweeter and sweeter by the second. So let's uh, let's see 
Let's see what this has got on it. Oh, okay. So I know what the vanilla reminds me of now. I know what the vanilla reminds me of now in this one. Anyone that smelt raspberry and vanilla by pocket sense, I feel like this is using a similar, if not identical vanilla. And that's what makes it that it feels a little, there's, it's like got a bit of a pop to it. It feels strange, but it smells purple. There's no, there's no additional notes on this one, but this smells a little bit. I don't know if it smells a little bit uh, violet-y. I don't know if that's just me. There's definitely a floral aspect to it that makes me feel maybe lavender, maybe violet. I don't know if it's one of the two. I don't feel like that's the myrrh that's that's there. This is this is lovely. This is really. I think I like this one better than the first two. I, I like the first two. I really do like the first two, but I feel like this is this is better than those. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah, this is. So this is to start off with. It's got it's got something to it, it's, and I think that might be the myrrh to start off with. But the tonka and the vanilla, it, it's the the mixture of the sweetness in this one is just it's just divine. It it feels almost edible, like you could like you could eat it. It's got it's gone. It's kind of got a. It's kind of got a baby powder nature to it. It's kind of got a baby powder nature to it. And it, yeah, it's just got that really quite nice powdery clean feel to it as well, as along with it being really sweet and really rich. That's divine. That's 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 full bottle worthy in anyone's book. In anyone's book, that's full bottle worthy. If you like sweet fragrances, now don't get me wrong, you will have to be a lover of sweet fragrances because if you don't like sweet fragrances, you're not going to like it. Yeah, so Stephen, so raspberry and vanilla, that, that baby powder nature, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. That's the similarity, and I think that is attached to the vanilla because they both smell. Once you get the baby powder nature of it, then the vanilla... You know, the, the, the standard smell of vanilla comes through. So it feels like it's kind of the same kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, that is, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. That's oh, really good. Oh, and very, very, it, well, very unisex. Because of how sweet it is and because of how luxurious it is, like I want to smell like it myself, but I want to smell someone smelling like this. I want to smell any one of the, the opposite, that male, female, whatever. Like anyone's getting away with this. Anyone. Oh, that's beautiful. That really is beautiful. Let's go back to Equinox now. Not my cup of tea in terms of scent profile, but let's see if it's changed. Okay, so all I'm getting now is neroli and vetiver. It's a, and it's, I think it's the vetiver that's coming through more so than anything else, um, which I can totally, like I said, I totally appreciate. And I know that vetiver and those types, of, those that style of fragrance is suited to a lot of people. I'm just not one of them. I can't. I can't ever see me going, yeah, I'm going to want to, I want to smell like that today. But I'm not kind of like throwing it away from my nose saying that's, that's unsmellable. I can't, I can't deal with it or anything. I can appreciate it. And for the fact that if you're going for a vet of a fragrance or, or a green, fresh fragrance that smells like the outdoor, that smells quite photorealistic to grass and that type of, deal it's it's bob on it's bob on but it's just not something that i'm reaching for unfortunately and then going back to arcasanti 
yeah, it's it's this modern day blue. It's, it, it it rivals things like Bleu de Chanel. It rivals things like Sauvage. It rivals things like uh, like Aventus. It's each of those has has a similarity to each other. They're all different, obviously, but that I feel like this fits in that kind of ballpark. And from what I hear, Elysium kind of does fit in that ballpark. Um, yeah, Baz. So that's the one. Another. So Baz Barry's just said here an, another one he enjoyed, especially on a day like today. Is Equinox has a green Irish tweed Neroli Portofino. Absolutely, and that was kind of kind of the 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 observation I made. Very green, very green like green Irish tweed, and the Neroli comes through. It's just, and it is perfect for a day like today. Absolutely, but it's just not my cup of tea, if I'm being honest, mate. And like I said, with this Arcasanti, it's very very nice. It's very mass appealing. I can see anyone, you know, any kind of like bloke aged fifteen to forty um, wanting to smell like this. But there are so many other fragrances. Thanks for thanks for dropping in, Stephen. I appreciate it, mate. But there are so many other fragrances of this nature um, that I don't know if it will get lost in the uh, lost in the crowd. But it's very very nice. And like I said, I'm wearing it tomorrow to get a full wearing out of it anyway. But um, yeah, yeah, really like it. Uh, in terms of my favorite, I think it's very clear from what. My favourite is is definitely the Murtonka and Vanilla, absolutely. Um, and then the rest, the, the obviously Equinox is definitely going to be my least favourite out of the five. And the other three, they kind of rival each other because they've each got their own they they've each got their own kind of vibe to it. Um, Arcasanti is very different to the Raspberry. Um, what was it called? Raspberry Uden Incense, um, which has a very different vibe to the Sibilance. I think that Raspberry Uden Incense has some similarities to the Sibilance because the type of fragrance it is, it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit spicier, it's a little bit richer, um, and they're probably more kind of like colder weather fragrances. Um, but my absolute favorite out of those ones was this Murtonka and Vanilla. Absolutely beautiful, um, and especially if you're a lover of sweet fragrances. You need to get your nose on that. You need to need to get your nose on that. That that's beautiful. And I'm just on the the website now. So that um, for in terms of kind of like pricing, our Cassanti for fifty mil, um, you're looking at twenty five quid. Uh, you're looking for Equinox. Uh, for 50 mil uh, is a is a little bit pricier, which is 35 pounds. But again, still for 50 mil of something that smells that the quality that it is, it's it's a, it's a bargain really. And then you've got Murtonka and Vanilla, which I mean, looking at the price of this for 50 mil, 25 quid, that's a steal. That is an absolute steal. I can't believe how how cheap it is to be honest. And then raspberry oud and incense again, twenty five pounds fifty mil, and the same with sibilance, twenty five pounds for fifty mil. So again, you're getting top notch fragrances that may or may not smell like the originals. I don't know because I've not smelled the originals of any of these. But regardless of whether or not they smell like the originals, I can vouch for all of them here. They smell great in their own right. So for the price as well, you can't really go wrong. I'm going to find it very hard not to want a full bottle of that Murtonka and vanilla, if I'm being honest. I mean, I'll get through, I'll get through this, this sample bottle that's been very, very, I will. And also just before we go on anymore, very uh, say thank you to Matt for um, sending these, these out um, for us to kind of sample and get our noses on. He's not asked us to review it or anything like that, but with stuff like this, I can't, you can't not, you know, the, the kind of quality that comes out of pocket sense and the amount of fragrances that I've bought from Pocket Sense before, you you know you're never really gonna you know you're never really gonna go wrong with it. Um so yeah, the I've 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 been blown away by pretty much everything that I've smelt um by Pocket Sense. And um yeah, I can't really kind of like sing sing the company's praises enough. And Matt is a wonderful, wonderful guy as well, really down to earth, more than happy to speak to you about anything. Um, regarding the fragrances, he's a really, really nice guy. Um, so yeah, definitely take a look at them. If any of these, you know, strike your fancy, take a look and, and get purchasing because they're uh, they're bangers. 
Um, Baz, Arcosanti smells like Elysium. Yeah, and if it does smell like Elysium, that's, you know, that's, that's what I've never smelt Elysium, but I will agree with the majority of people when they say that I've seen a lot of people say Elysium kind of smells very similar to the blue kind of fragrance, the, the modern day blue fragrance. Um, like, I, I, when I say blue fragrance, I can't really kind of think of any other term for it, but the Bleu de Chanel, uh, Sauvage type of fragrances. And it's very, very nice. It's very mass appealing. And I can see why people would like it. Um, <laughs> yeah, smell. I, well, if that's it, then you know, if I'm if I'm going to get a compliment from it, then I'll I'll spray away, mate. I'll spray away. Um, so, like I said, these are five out of seven that that are just bit, that have just been released. Nick is going to be reviewing the other two, so I don't know if he's going to be doing two separate videos or just doing one one video reviewing both of them. But he's going to do um, a full full review on both of those after he gives them a bit of a wear. Um, so it won't be just yet, but it'll be coming very shortly um with a review of that and i believe they are for um a i'll just double check what they're called so the first one is if i can find it on he here it's called citrus paradisi i'm not too sure what that is a uh, interpretation of and then the next one is a fragrance called, I can't find it, Maduro Tobacco. And I believe that one is a interpretation of, of Red Tobacco by Mancera. Um, so some top quality stuff coming out from, uh, oh, Tiger. There you go. Bulgari Tiger is the, the Citrus Paradisi. Um, so, yeah, some top quality stuff, as always, coming out of pocket sense and Matt, I'll be hitting you up very shortly to be buying a full bottle of this bad boy because it's absolutely beautiful. I think I will end it there. I'm not going to take too much more of your uh, Saturday evening. I very much appreciate you spending the last 50 minutes with me. Um, it's, you know, you could be outside, you know, drinking in the nice, nice weather that we've got now, but you know, you're spending it with me and I appreciate that. So I won't take any much, uh, too much more of your time i will say goodbye good night and i love you all because because yeah anyway no in, in all seriousness thanks very much for for tuning in guys um stay tuned because we do have some reviews coming up for uh, movie reviews we've got some reviews coming up for fragrances there are a lot of movies that have come out over the last uh week or so that are coming out this week as well so i think there's about five movies that i really kind of want to be getting to watch and to be reviewing as well we've been lacking in in that department uh recently so um we're going to be very much uh getting back on it now so stay tuned for that you won't be uh, seeing the last of us yet but yeah i will say good night goodbye have a lovely, lovely weekend. If uh, you're out there, stay safe. And if it's still hot wherever you are in the world, because it seems like everywhere is hot right now, just be safe and put some sun cream on. Because if you, uh, you're you anything like me, you'll burn very, very quickly. We don't want that. Anyway, I digress. Good night. Speak to you all soon. Peace and love. Good night.